So in the past, if you've wanted to get into motion capture, it's either gonna cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, or you could use some sort of janky system with like an Xbox Connect and some third-party applications. And that's kind of what I thought was the only options available until the company Radical reached out to me and they wanted to do a sponsored video on their new app that allows you to motion capture data right from your phone and then upload it to an AI system that tracks your footage and extracts the motion capture data right out of it for you. And I'm like, what? So then I downloaded the app and I tried it and I was like, So that's right guys, in this video we're going to be using the Radical Motion app and doing some tests to see what kind of results we can get. We're going to start off by shooting some footage, having it motion captured, and then we're going to take that motion capture data, import it into Blender, and use it on a 3D model to get some animated results. Now, if this works well, you can definitely use this for many applications like game development, animation blocking, and like reference and stuff. There's so many applications that I can see this being useful. The app is currently running their Gen 2 AI software, which is pretty good, but there is actually a Gen 3 in the works that is coming very soon that will be a desktop app for your computer and would be even more powerful with even more advanced 3D motion capture. So that's really exciting. So go ahead and get the app you can use the link in the description below and that will save you 10% off the subscription but there is a free trial as I say in the title of the video so you can go ahead and download the free trial and get some free upload time and download time to play around with the app and see if you like it. Once you use your free minutes, Radical offers many different affordable pricing options to accommodate to any budget and anyone that signs up for your subscription will automatically get their membership renewed for free once Gen 3 is released in the next month or two. So once you have the app installed, you're going to create your free account, go ahead and sign up with an email and password, and then you'll be able to log in. Right off the bat, they give you a few tutorials to get started with the app. Pretty basic things, but it'll help you get better results. And I'll also be going over a few of these tips in the video. So now for filming the video, we're just going to use the in-app camera and obviously you're going to want to do it in portrait mode, although it's not required to shoot footage within the app. And any clip captured from a consumer grade camera will also work. You'll also want to lock your camera off on a tripod. For this, I kind of rigged something up on my tripod just to hold my phone as I didn't really have something sitting around. As long as it's not moving, you're going to get better results. And then for your motion capture, you're going to want to wear some tighter clothing just so you don't have too much baggy clothing, as well as wear something that contrasts from the background a bit. So you don't want to have colors blending in with the background. But as long as you do those things and keep your body in full frame of the video, you'll be ready to go with some motion capture. So now just going ahead and starting a recording, you can set a timer so you have some time to get in front of your phone. And you're going to want to start off holding a T-pose as this will allow the app to kind of track your limbs and get the rig set up correctly. And then go ahead and make some goofy, wonky movements, making yourself look like a fool in front of the camera, giving it some information to track. And then once you've completely made a fool of yourself by dancing around in front of your camera, you can go ahead and upload that data to be analyzed. This will usually take 20 to 30 minutes. And if you go to the website online, you'll have the progress bar there of how long it will be until your footage is motion tracked and ready to be used. So after about 20 minutes, our footage is now analyzed and you can see what it looks like here in the web browser. You have a nice app to kind of see how your scan worked. And as you can see, this one actually worked pretty well. We have some nice camera tracked movement and this should definitely be usable. So now that we have this, you can go ahead and download the FBX file right from Radical there, a very small file. And we're going to be ready to hop into Blender and open up this motion tracking data on one of our characters. So I'm gonna put the link to the original creators of this robot character that we'll be using in the description, but you can also download the version that I have in the description that is for Eevee, which will be what we're using in this video. The one other thing you don't wanna download is there is a T-Pose rig in the description that you wanna also download. We're gonna use this rig to map it to our character so that rig can then follow our motion capture rig perfectly. So go ahead and download both the rig and the character from the description and we'll be ready to roll. So here we are now in Blender 2.8 and we have our cute robot model being rendered here in Eevee. I just slapped some quick basic metal materials over this to work in Eevee. Didn't go through too much time, but it'll be perfectly fine for the, uh, the video here. So I'm just gonna go over and switch to solid view and we're gonna open up that rig so we can map it to our character here and start having it animated to our motion capture data. 
So going over to file and append, you're just gonna wanna grab the rig t pose that I give in the description, then go to the collection and open up collection one. So here you'll see we have the rig and we also have another part of the rig that is for the IK. So just opening up the collection over here, you can see we have the reference rig and the IK rig. I don't want the IK rig, so I'm just gonna hit X and delete that. Then with our reference rig here selected, we're just gonna kind of line it up over our character. So I'm just gonna grab it along the Y axis here and kind of line them up closely to the character. And then if you go over to your viewport display here, over on the object, down to viewport display, you can enable in front and that'll make it so you can always see your rig nicely here. So with our rig placed right about there, we'll just kind of get the arms set up and that's the most important there. We're gonna kind of start placing the bones over the limbs of our robot a little bit better so we can have a little better reference of what's gonna be attached. So first off, we're gonna go into edit mode on our rig here and we're gonna choose X-axis mirror over in our properties tab here under tool. Just choose X-axis mirror and this will make it a lot easier so we only have to edit half of the mesh. And I'm also gonna start off by deleting the fingers off of this rig as we don't need the finger capture data as the app isn't really good enough to capture any finger movements as that would be literally insane. So go ahead and delete that. We're just gonna leave the arms there. And then for the toes, we can also delete the last bone there as we only need one bone for the feet. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start placing our bones here. Actually, this one's not connected. So if you have a bone that's not connected, you can go over to your bone settings here and then just click connected. And now you can see it moves with it. So I'm gonna do that same thing for the foot there as that's not connected either. And then we're just gonna line up our bones sort of to our robot mesh here. So I want it to be hinged around that, um, that ball shape there. So we're just gonna do that and then grab the toes, pull those over as well. Kind of lining up the bones with our character. And then the bones here can be centered right over there. Now if we go to the side view, we have to do a few more options on our, uh, our bones here, just centering them up over the ball joints on the robot here. Pretty simple stuff. Nice and easy. Next up, we'll line up the bones for the arms. So the arm socket here, we're gonna wanna be right about that point there. And if it helps, you can go to Z and go to wireframes. You can kinda see the joint behind it there. I wanna grab both of these bone joints by shift clicking both of them. And then you can just place it right over the hinged area there. Same thing with this one. Grab both of the joints there. Place it right over that ball joint there. And then the, the end of this would just go to the ball joint on the hand. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna go to top view and line these up from that view as well. Grabbing them along the x-axis here, or the y-axis I should say, and lining them up right along our rig. The last thing to do for setting up the bones is there's kind of three different parts to the robot here, the bottom, the center, and the top. And you just kind of want to line up these bones with those bones. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this one down a little bit here and then pull this one up a little bit here just so it kind of fits that stomach there. And that's really all you have to do. So now with that said and done, we can start mapping our rig. I'm gonna hit Z and go to solid view to our character. So because this character is broken up into multiple pieces, you won't be able to use the automatic weight feature to assign the weights. But that also kind of works because this is a robot and so the automatic one wouldn't really work for assigning the parts anyways, as you'll see in a minute here. So just go ahead and grab the mesh and then shift grab your armature and go control P with automatic weights. Even though it won't work, it will help to assign the groups. So this will do some of the process for us. And after about 10, 15 seconds, it finishes, but says that it couldn't uh, complete it because of the issue I just pointed out. There's too many loose parts on this robot. If I tab into edit mode, you can see that there's all these individual pieces. And that is why the automatic weights won't work. But that is fine because we're gonna take our rig here, map it to our character, and then open up our motion capture data and assign this rig to follow the motion captured rig. This might be a good time to mention that the next update to the app featuring the Gen 3 AI is also coming with an improved rig, which will make it much easier to assign rigs to characters in the future. And there's actually gonna be an add-on developed for that too. So some super exciting stuff coming from Radical. So after parenting it now with automatic weights, if we grab our rig and go over to the vertex 
data here. You can see that we have all the bones in here. And this is what we're going to use to assign the different bones here now to the different parts in the mesh. Something else that will make this process even easier is if you grab your rig and go over to the under the armature settings here in the object data, you can choose names. And this will allow you to see the name of every bone. and will make it really easy for assigning the bones to the mesh here now. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to select everything that I want this part of the arm to be assigned to. I'm going to choose this option here, which allows me to select vertices behind the mesh that I can't see. So I'm just going to hit B and box select all of those vertices, and then I'm going to hit L to select the rest of that part there. And you can see that gives me that arm joint, which is exactly what I want, and I want to be assigned to the left forearm. So I'm just going to grab left forearm over here, click Assign, and now when I move that bone, if I tab out of edit mode, grab that rig here, go into post mode, you can see that that arm is going to move now with this bone, which is exactly what we want. So this is just the process that we're going to go through now and add the rest of the weights to the different parts of our rig here. So for the left arm here, and I can just hit L, select all the different loose parts. And once I have them all selected, then I can just grab left arm, assign, and that's going to work great. Jumping over to the right arm here, we can make sure that this is the only thing we have selected, select all those loose parts, grab the right arm here and click assign. So this takes a few minutes, so I'm not going to show the whole process, but it's basically just grabbing the parts in the mesh that you want to be assigned to the bone and then going into to the settings here and assigning them. Pretty simple stuff. Now for the body here, I'm just going to assign the bottom here to the hips and the spine as there's more bones here than we really need. So I can assign both the hips and the spine to this bone. Then I'm going to grab the middle chunk here by hitting L and selecting it all. We're also going to have to select this little part in the back of the head here, or back of the chest there I should say. The back of the body, I guess, would be the right way to say it. And all we're going to do is assign the spine 1 to this. We can also assign the spine two, as again, they're both bones in this group, so just assign spine two. We're just gonna hit L and select the chest here and just assign the right shoulder and the left shoulder both to this bone. Now for the neck, we're just gonna hover over it, hit L and assign the neck to it. Everything is assigned. So I'm just grabbing our rig here, jumping into pose mode, and we're gonna do a little bit of moving around here and making sure that everything works the way we would expect it to. So far, so good. Everything's moving around the way we want it to. And you can see that we did miss two parts here that should be assigned to the chest. So I'm going to jump to object mode, and that's just these two rubber pieces on both arms here. And we're just going to assign those to the spine too, and also to the right shoulder and left shoulder. But with that assigned now, it looks like everything is working correctly, and we can go ahead and map this character to our animation. So this is the fun part, guys. We're gonna go ahead and import that data that we just captured, and we're gonna map our robot to it. So to do this, I'm gonna go over to File, and I'm going to go Import FBX. Here I'm just gonna locate the Android scan that I just downloaded that I captured off my phone, and import the FBX file. This will take a few seconds to import, and there you can see we have our data. So it starts off with me waving like I did, moving around, kicking my leg back, moving my arms around, and uh, all the data looks like it's there and looks like it's actually captured really well. So let's go ahead and assign our robot to it. So the way we're going to assign the robot to it is we're going to jump into pose mode, and as you can see, all these bones already have a constraint added to them. And that's because we're going to be using a constraint to map this bone to that bone and vice versa since we're using the same rig on the character now as we're using on our motion capture rig. So I'm just going to grab our left leg to start, jump over to the constraints here, and all I have to do is grab the armature for this rig, which is, if I tab into object mode here, grab it, you can see reference.001. So all I have to do now is grab our bones here, jump to pose mode, and with this bone selected, I'm going to choose that armature, and it right away assigns it to the right bone as well. So it has the right rotation and angle on it, and it's actually working just the way we'd expect it to. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the left leg up, and all of these, all you have to do is punch the rig in there. You don't even have to do the individual bones, and it will snap it right to it. You want to make sure you do it for both the legs here. And you can see that those are already in the right position. Very cool. And we'll just go ahead and do it with the arms as well. 
all you have to do is choose the reference rig one and uh, it will automatically assign it to it. And if I was to play this back through here, you can see that our character is now making the exact same motions that we just motion captured through the app. Really cool stuff, but you might notice that because of the robot shape and because we had to kind of distort the rig a bit for this character, some of the bones aren't really lining up with the joints that they should be at. If I click that button, you can see clear that they should be over here and it's offset a bit. So this can actually be fixed, tabbing into edit mode, grabbing your bone joints and just kind of moving them at this point if you want to try and fix this. So for example, if I move these in a bit closer, you can see that that kind of gets the bone a bit closer to where we want it. And so if I move it in even closer, you can see that the bone is closer to that joint. So this is just kind of offsetting it now by um, moving them around. And this is also really only necessary because of the character that we decided to use and it being a bit different than the rig um, kind of expects it to be because it's not really a human, it's a robot. And so joints are a little bit different than they should be. But there you go, I just moved it around a bit. Um, and got it lined up quite a bit better in relation to where it should be there. So that's looking better for the legs. That's another thing I've noticed with the feet that they don't really work to track them much. The rotation kind of gets messed up. I'll show you here in a second. If I was to grab the foot here and track it to it, the rotation kind of gets twisted. So for whatever reason, the feet don't really work and you just want to leave the foot assigned to the leg. Kind of similar to the hands. So due to the robot shape, we don't actually need all of these bones assigned here. And actually taking the ones that are duplicates off will give you a little bit better results. So I'm just taking the constraints off of some of these. And you might also notice that the head is kind of low on the neck here. And that's just another reason why you might wanna take the bones here down a little bit. And the more you pull them down, the more neck he'll kind of have there. So that's kind of helpful as well, just to kind of bring his head back into the right place. So I just shifted around a few of the bones here in edit mode just to kind of make them match up a little bit better with our rig here. As you can see, and it looks a bit better throughout the animation here now, it's not gonna be perfect due to the rig that we chose. If you had a mesh that was all attached, there'd be a little bit of stretching, but it would might look a little bit better. But you can see we have some really cool looking results here. And if I switch to EV, it would get even cooler. So here you can see our character and I can just hide the rig here if we want. And here you can see our character moving around just like I did in our video. Now there's gonna be a few errors with this, but it's pretty fantastic. Um, there's a few errors mainly because of the robot that I used. You can see that because of the joints not stretching due to the uh, separate parts, you'll have a little bit of areas where you have some mistakes there. But overall, pretty cool stuff. And if you want to use like the low poly character from my tutorial from a few months ago, you could get a result like this. I'll show you right here. And this was just done using the low poly character. And you can see when you have a mesh like a human and it stretches, that hides some of those issues even more so. But pretty cool stuff. This is a lot of fun to play around with. It's also super cool to go ahead and then render it in Eevee so you can have it played back in real time animation here. So how cool is that to be able to have the, uh, the animation then being able to be played back here um, with Eevee being rendered in real time. So some pretty cool stuff. And I'd like to again thank Radical for sponsoring this video with their app. Really cool. I highly encourage you guys to check it out if you're at all interested in motion capture. This is a lot of fun to play around with. And again, if you use the link in the description, you'll save 10%. When you sign up for a subscription, that gives you a lot more download time and a lot more upload time. So you can do a lot more with the app. But that's gonna kinda wrap up our video, guys. That is motion capturing with nothing but your phone. Really crazy, I'm really impressed with Radical. Um, I hope you guys have some fun playing around with motion capture. If you wanna use the motion capture data, if I haven't mentioned it yet, here, you can use the link in the description where you'll find this file that you can download online to motion capture the same footage I used. But yeah, it's a ton of fun. I highly recommend you guys try it out. And I can see this being really useful for a lot of things like I said earlier. Game development for one, I've already heard of a few game companies that are using this for development, as well as like, mapping out animations and you can even use this as like your blocking animation and then just come back and maybe tweak it improve it a little bit where there was a few errors but like this this does most of the heavy lifting for you so pretty crazy cool things being done with the radical app super exciting and i hope you guys have some fun playing around with it also a new video that's going to be coming soon is going to be taking this character and this motion capture data 
and compositing it into live footage. So adding 3D characters to live footage, that's gonna be a new tutorial coming soon. But in the meantime, guys, have some fun motion capturing yourself and putting your animations onto characters. It's a ton of fun, trust me. So that's gonna do it for me though. I'd like to again thank Radical for sponsoring this video. Super awesome app, super cool things coming. And I'll see you guys all in a future video. Bye-bye. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.